Hello, greetings. Uh, sorry, I have to speak. Although I have something in my mouth, I need it for some sugar, and energy. So I'll be eating. I know it's rude and talking. So please uh, forgive me for this. However, I just remember something, and you know, due to my condition, health conditions, mental condition, I could forget about this. Um, what I'm going to say now, uh, many people will go against me around the world because uh, people are coming, even Sunnis are coming to realize what Shia Islam is, Shia Islam, and uh, even uh, the a European lady from UK, uh, if I may name her, Lauren. Lauren uh, Booth, I was going to say Wood. I'm so into David Wood, <laughs> into David. <laughs> Lauren, Lauren Booth. <coughs> so, you know, she went to Masumaikum Shrine in uh, Iran, Kum. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw all this really, we were told that Imam Ali's name one day in Saniyat Otegi will wake up an Indian Shia had a written in Sani in Sanu ko Peter Dhone Dosa Saputingi Lakenge Hussein Hamara Hussein is one. Uh, so I had uh, found this quote in Karachi, my own research, like what the Hindus were saying for Imam Hussain. Again, now I'm against uh, the apni gar, like this Muhammad Rasulullah, apni gar ko aag lagana, koi inse sikhe, to wo gana hai na pool, aayis sape ko. Indian song from the Indian movie. How I've come to this conclusion. <clears throat> it's uh, due to many years of contemplation and questioning. Why couldn't Imam Hussain save Yazid and his army? Why didn't Prophet Muhammad bless Aisha? the little girl, wife, bride, little girl. So, but uh, then the Shias will tell you that it could be that she was 19 years old, not six, playing with dolls. That's from the Sunni sources. <coughs> so I'm blown, I could be blown away. Uh, so what I did, okay, how I came to this and, uh, you know, conclusion against Shia Islam to forget the Sunni Islam. No, but now I have to go to the Sunni Hadiths to really listen to the Jews and uh, what they were trying to tell us at that time. So once I realized that if I was uh, at the, during the time of Prophet Muhammad, I may not have taken him as the Prophet until Imam Hussain in Karbala, I would have changed. So, I mean, uh, through regarding my Shia hadiths and everything, I was thinking this way. So now when I read about uh, these Jews being killed by Prophet Muhammad, although they fought against him, they didn't believe in him, they had enmity against him for no reason or rhyme, but that he was Allah's messenger trying to invite them to good and all this, right? Uh, doing good. What is the matter with you people? We are told in another verse of the Quran that I want to, 
I'm inviting you to good and you want to kill me and to, you know, and silence me. About, I think, uh, Saleh or some other prophet, it is written in the Quran, this verse. So anyway, so this way I was uh, thinking, well, even if he was not, uh, even if, he, sorry, even if uh, Rasulullah was a true prophet, as a Shia, as a prayer answered of Allama Rishi Tarabi, uh, a genius of his time, Zakir, Allama Rishi Tarabi, a religious scholar, our Shia religious scholar. Uh, he used to come to our place uh, because when he would be reciting majlises in Nishta Park, our house was opposite and all this. And he, before I was born, he gave my mother through my father a prayer, Taweez, like written. And was that Taweez was supposed to be put under my parents' bed. And for 40 days, uh, all this, right? Uh, uh, my mother, my parents had to do something. So then I was conceived and then I survived. I was the second surviving child of my mother. But through Allah Marashid Rabi's prayers, we thought. Although her aunt, my mother's aunt Zahra had a Devi, but she now was in uh, United States. So, um, uh, Devi's, uh, Devi used to just stones throw, you know, from the air, stones used to come. So one uh, stone, which uh, my mother's uh, puppy's <coughs> father's sister's uh, husband had in a ring. So that stone of Devi, uh, saved my brother when he was a child and had very high fever. He was in the hospital, ch children's hospital, and they put him in an ice tub. And they said he might not survive. So then Agha Mahmud, you know, it, uh, helped, uh, like gave his, the stone that Devi had given him, he encircled uh, Zuhair. And that, uh, then they said that that stone disappeared because I guess it was supposed to be used once only to save a life or something like that. So then the stone disappeared after that. Uh, so, yeah, so Devi, uh, is, uh, Devi's gift to Agha Mahmud saved my one brother's life in childhood. Okay, so, uh, but I was Allah Marshid Rabi's dua surviving and uh, so why would I go against Shia Islam after all those years uh, yes I would I because uh, uh, I contemplated and I used to think that for one example is that like I felt it today yesterday while sleeping before going to sleep uh, like I used to tell myself then later on when a lot came on me, I was like, no, no. I, and I was contemplating, like, no, even though I went through a lot, but still, I would not leave this religion. So, excuse me. So what happened is, I was like, I couldn't find the proof for Prophet Muhammad. And he didn't seem like that but we could never say something like that right like his sacrifice and his going up to Maharaj meeting God I I started to think like why couldn't he take all the people why couldn't he give this like the Hindus have that if you do this meditation breathing and Kriya Yoga yoga <coughs> or if you do that then you yourself can sit, you know, and you don't even have to go to the mountain, Himalayas. Like Prophet Muhammad used to go to the 
it up mountain hills or something. So uh, as we were told and the angel told him there that now declare, he used to meditate, you know. I mean contemplate, contemplate, not meditate. He already knew, it's in Shia Islam too, right? that he used to contemplate going to the mountain era. And then God finally told him, it's time for you to declare. Because he used to go there and say, you know, when my time will come that I have to then uh, bring these people to the true God, one God, you know. Uh, worshipping idols and this nonsense is happening and uh, burying <coughs> little girls, infant children, alive, female. <coughs> so he used to contemplate on the, these terms. So it, it is in the Shia account. Anyways, when I thought of him, I didn't see anything much special about Prophet Muhammad. And thinking of Imam Ali also, like, I couldn't, because, you know, when I separated from his design, they wouldn't allow me to see her. I started to become extremely sensitive in that depression, hellish years. So I started to contemplate that, you know, people here in Okay, now I've forgotten my point in uh, Karachi, God forsaken, and all this. And it was like a thriller to live in Karachi for me now. It was like a jungle. I'm living in a jungle with and Mr. Desai taught me to speak the truth, like Imam Ali right, would, under all circumstances. So what happened to me? There was a time I just wanted you know, just not to see any thriller movies. We're going out and it's depressing. It gets worse and worse in Karachi. And I didn't feel like I belonged in this God-forsaken city or country. So like that, I couldn't watch thriller movies also. You know, American movies for entertainment. Or I just wanted to watch some light uh, comedy, romantic love story, but very light and all this. And if a uh, love story, ooh, at any separation, I'd cry and cry and cry. That made me extremely vulnerable, sensitive. Uh, so what happened is I couldn't read Imam Ali's Najil Balagado's letters and the Mavia and him and Mavia and him. And I was just in that phase where I started to question Imam Ali too. Yeah, his, uh, like, what is this? Couldn't there be another religion? Then uh, I would settle myself down because questioning Imam Hussain's Karbala was out at that time. But it d did come later on. Like, later on, I even questioned Imam Sajjad's and all this aftermath of Karbala. Imagine uh, who was sick and so in, in Islam if you're sick you don't participate in the holy wars. But I questioned him uh, who accompanied the women folk of his family, Rasulullah's family, ladies, you know, children, falling off camels as they were after Karbala having slaughtered the Bani Hashem males and children, some of them. So they had to be accompanied and Sham Gariba comes the evening. Anyways, I questioned all that and I couldn't take Karbala and I used to get cut off like Psychologically, I couldn't, because it was too heavy for me, too heavy. And then wondering, well, what did, did Ali Akbar go first and yeah, things like that. And questioning where was Imam Ali when Omar bin Khattab came to burn the house of Fatima and threaten her and all this. 
and then finally injured her. So Imam Ali was uh, nowhere to be found. Then I asked Sayyid Yusuf and he gave me an answer that didn't really, you know, I didn't understand that uh, if, oh, uh, that if uh, Bibi Fatima was saving Imam Ali's life from Omar, she was trying to save her husband's life because they would have dragged him to give the bed to Abu Bakr and all this. So that's why Bibi came in the middle of her husband and she was injured. Such a man who was, and Imam Ali could not, they tell us that at that time, Imam Ali, Imam Ali's sword was inside. Because the Muslims would be so disunited that I cannot tell you. So, okay, I cannot complete this. Uh, just in silent uh, shock. So, Imam Ali, who had fought many a battles and brought down many like very experts in army, you know, uh, the soldier thing, experts in using the sword and this fighting. What do you call them? Right? So, thank you for helping with the words. You can complete the sentence and bring the, your word here. So I thought uh, I would rather go for Imam Hussain at that time than going back to Imam Hussain. Or when I think of Shaitan and Iblis, I co could not find an answer why this world was created, why a human God had to create human beings. And So going back to Imam Hussain. So this is how I then think about those Jewish ladies, 16, 17, or whatever age they were, that they lost their husbands. When I, as a Shia, after 1400 years, I'm saying that I may not have been a follower of Rasulullah that time. <laughs> Did I have a choice? Would I? Would I have had a choice? I mean, not a, just, you know, a peaceful person who's doing his own or her own work or her own spirituality, spirituality maybe, you know, from worshipping idols and like that. So, so I have to complete this before that I just, uh, my energy is depleting, it's uh, hemorrhaging. <laughs> so I'll just complete this and uh, war, Jewish ladies, husband. And you know, they fe maybe fell in love and they got married like that. You know, the Jews. Uh, but uh, so we were told like out of help, Rasulullah was so caring so like why not make them sisters like that thing had gone mother of believers had come <clears throat> for the wives of the prophet but sister captives if rasulullah is kids <clears throat> you see at that time put yourself in that war thing uh, the opposite uh, what do you call that the right opposite side and even if Rasulullah is a true prophet I think he should have said that you are my sisters come to my house uh, I have uh, Aisha is there Zainab bin Josh is there who was my cousin they will take care of you we were told that Bibi Fatima the Zahra used to nurse people during war you know like now they have these nurses during World War One or two, right? So, no sister. They had to marry. Islam had made it this way. 
<gasps> yes. No, 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 don't come near me, don't touch me. Like, this is not, okay, for us Muslims, uh, even for us Shia Muslims, no, a Muslim, just a Muslim. Don't even think of me as a Shia Muslim now. Uh, just a Muslim, like uh, looking at it through the Sunni eyes, right? Looking at it through any eye. How could your thing allow a woman? No, it was like, so I was literally like going down and uh, no, no, don't touch me. My husband has just died. I'm not in love with you. But in our Islam, we are told. A young Molvi comes and says, I want to marry you. A Sayyid comes. No, I'm sorry, I'm in love with someone else. They don't understand that. We are told that we're supposed to marry the most pious and it was a good proposal. A proposal has come. It is a blessing from God. Even if you don't love him, leave this love sh shove aside. <clears throat> For Islam's sake, marry him. He's going to help you. Because maybe no one wants to marry you because, you know, you're Maybe you have polio, or you have a defect. Or in Islam we are told, they were supposed to marry to just looking at the piety of a person. Not out of love or anything. But these poor women from the pagan sides or from the Jewish side, they may have loved their husband. Like we see the Westerners, you know, holding hands and uh, uh, they fall in love falling in love and romantic walks and togetherness and our thing is uh, very on piety not on heart hearts of people can go astray there's a verse in the quran <clears throat> so even if like i'm just thinking even if he was a true prophet prophet rasulullah let's say so, uh, Imam Hussain has uh, definitely uh, given us the foundation of la ilaha illallah, if there is a, and so Islam. So he's dug, he's uh, dug a grave for all Hindus and all this, right? Now, I may sound like a criminal, like, uh, you know, oh, Tahmina Durani? You may not uh, like what I'm saying. She looked like a criminal. She has written in her book, like, I I look like the one who's, you know, outspoken. Or, anyways, um, so some people, they like the, what has happened to the Hindus against the Kashmiri Muslims. You may think, uh, you know, <coughs> just, uh, they are dishonest, dishonest people, Hindus, idol worshippers are dishonest, deceptive, treacherous. Uh, excuse me. Uh, so, and you uh, grief, uh, they just want to go and be happy because Imam Ali himself has said that grief is half of old age. <coughs> Grieving. So who wants to grieve for anyone? They will tell me, the Shias. Like only, a big, this is a miracle, Karbala and people coming and grieving for Imam Hussain. So it's a lot. I have a lot to say, but you know, here pieces, taking pieces from here and there and sharing with you, cutting myself uh, off, like going back to war again, Rasulullah. So a Sayyid there or Imam Ali wants to marry me. 
and I have been the chief of the tribe of uh, the Jews. They've killed my father. They said, uh, Imam Ali is telling me that he's the... And No, Imam Ali can't marry me because he's married to Fatima Zahra now. Oh, yes. So, Imam Ali can't marry those captive women who are married, uh, who are married or their husbands now kept captives also alive. So Surah Nisa ayat, but Rasulullah wants to marry me. <laughs> so I put myself like, you know, in everyone's shoes, like, if I was Umar bin Khattab, would I be jealous of Imam Ali? No, no, no. If God wants to, if, see, if Imam Ali is the Imam leader, piety comes when you keep, that's, you, jealousy doesn't come. So no, I didn't like Umar bin Khattab being jealous of, I could not understand. When God is commanded, if God commands that my aunt, let's say my aunt Muqaddas becomes the buzzerg, why should I be jealous of her? I'll be happy for her. And uh, each one deserves its own work and God has uh, chosen her, right? I was, this was instilled in me from childhood. So I, I would not be jealous that God chose my aunt and not me. This question never, I thought of it, but in my heart, I would not, the question of jealousy would not arise. I would not question God on that. I, but I started to question God on human sufferings depression and going to psychiatrist not finding from the Quran we are told and there's an ayat that the healing comes to the believers like and this is the healing I did that also so like that okay I'm uh, here and there okay pieces back to the war Just put yourselves in that place. I have no words. I mean, I would be shaking. Like, don't touch me, please. You just killed me. And I don't know whether you are the true prophet or not. But they told us that, uh, okay, now we're going into detailed thing. They told us that Safiya bent away always believed in one God, she was a pure heart. Pure heart, Quran ayat says, do not ascribe purity to yourselves. Only pure heart comes from Rasulullah, chosen ones. <coughs> so no one has a pure heart. It's all ego. We don't know where this ego sneaks up from. Even uh, the shirk, there are subtle shirks, polytheists, polytheism, there's su subtle polytheisms, polytheism in people, even Sunnis who may say, you know, they worship in one God and they don't call on any other, but they don't realize in their lives, subtle, but if you give preference to one beard, oh my hair, I have to straighten it, I look at myself, you know, and no. This could be a subtle, like you're giving attention to yourself. But then Rasulullah says that, look, uh, make your face. You can put gulab on your face and say Rasulullah's sweat was gulab. You can give attention to your face and all that until a certain, you know, to a certain extent, uh, you keep yourselves clean, and look after yourselves, perfume. Rasulullah, Allah Muhammad says, I don't know how far that narration is true, that uh, Rasulullah liked three things. One was perfume, other was beautiful women or women, and the third I've forgotten. You know, or like, cleanliness or that haya, shyness is part of my shyness, haya, shame, shyness. 
So he's shy to tell you people, Suraza, to leave since you've been here for a long time now with, and wanting to ask him questions and now don't. When he got married to Zainab bin Josh, Surya Azab, we are told in the ayat, he's shy to tell you to leave <coughs> his house. So all these things didn't uh, sum up, uh, you know, didn't, uh, they were all, uh, I got, I was confused in my religion. On one hand this, on the other hand that. On one hand, he's shy to tell his guests to leave because uh, they're sitting there over time. On the wedding night of, let's say, uh, Zainab and Jali. <coughs> but here, yeah, Safiya bin Thuay, who had a pure heart and she was from the pure heart. We were told even Zainab bin Ali was not a complete masoom meaning completely innocent, 100% like Panjatan Park, Rasulullah Fatima Ali Hassan Hussain. <coughs> and thereafter the Imams. Imams have to be 100% pure, infallible. So how can uh, uh, Safiya bin Huwai be of pure heart and she believed in one God okay she believed in one God and she was from the house of Harun and Musa she was their relative uh, so Prophet uh, Muhammad she wanted to marry Prophet Muhammad just after the death I mean give her some time to grieve right but maybe that's why Yazid didn't give uh, Imam Hassan's uh, women folks you know, the second day or the third day there. I don't know when they had to go as captives. They were taken from Karbala to Kufa then Sham. Because uh, maybe, maybe, just maybe Rasulullah was not giving them that period of mourning. He used to cry on that like anything, like anything, feel it. That uh, Ali Rasulullah, after killing their father, brother, beloved, their two sons, uh, nephews, niece, oh no, not niece, because women are not allowed in, to go to war in Islam. After killing, uh, so they were not given that time for mourning. I mean, I used to wonder when uh, the 12th Muharram used to come. Oh my God, you know, Kafala has been taken. One day morning, what? Maybe, just maybe Rasulullah also didn't give them any morning time in the battle of Khandaq, Khaybar, killing their husband and all this. Maybe, just maybe, that's why Yazid's army was doing this, did this. And the women taking, so if, the, if anywhere there's this surah, surah is like a pocket, small pocket, small little thing, you know, of Shias having that piece of sympathy, like my Shia heart, having that small piece of sympathy for her son and his uh, 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 Rasulullah's children, uh, grandchildren. Then Safiya bin, they can use Safiya bin Josh and say, no, our Rasulullah was a true prophet. If our Rasulullah was a true prophet, then, uh, and the uh, husband has just died. You know, Safiya's husband. Uh, one month. But we are not, I don't know if, 
Allama Majlisi or any Shia account has given such detailed thing about uh, life story, about uh, Safiya went away. So some of our books are not even translated in <coughs> English, but they could be translated in Urdu. I don't know how to read Urdu, read or write Urdu. I'm an illiterate in Urdu. So what shall I do now? Uh, where shall I go? I'm thinking. But uh, after a month, do you think even if it was after a month or two, it's taken me 1400 years to <coughs> find out if Rasulullah was a true prophet. 1400 years, I mean, it's taken me in my life at least some 53 years now. And I still feel, no, I don't think I, will, I would have been a Muslim at the time of Rasulullah's life and declaration of his prophethood until maybe in Karbala, wanting to help Imam Hussain or being with Imam Hussain or becoming a Shia then. So can you blame I mean, how can Rasulullah take these, having killed their fathers even, take them as wives? And they have uh, surrendered themselves and said, yes, marry us. Huh? Ask yourselves. I'll be like, <coughs> please, if you are a true prophet, don't touch me. For the sake of your truthful prophethood, and I'm not in love with you. I just lost my husband. <clears throat> okay? Think about it. It's really like shuddering, shuddering. So, as I have shuddered when the Zakir recited, recites Sham, court of Yazid and asking for Kanizi, yes, in slave slave girl, uh, Imam Hussain's three years old daughter. It's like, you know, as I've shuddered at that. Uh, hmm. So no, now I'm not going to shudder. And yes, when I listen to this, uh, now I've kept a stone heart. I don't know how I'm in control of that heart. This heart of mine that I have. But for the sake of truth, even when uh, my um, there is some oppression here on me. Oh, <coughs> so please excuse me. Sorry, I have this cough. <coughs> so I'll continue later. I, yeah, I just uh, get stopped emotionally in this shock. I don't. Words don't flow, expression, I can't express myself properly. Hopefully, I hope you can understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, I will, maybe it will take a year for me to uh, do research and then come back here, that final research, gathering all the pieces and be able to give you evidence with references on my fingertips or the tip of my tongue and also with the great memory and great expression words that emotionally I will not be stopped taking pauses and then eating my words up one day. Until then, I'll just do these piecemeal videos and would hope that you would contemplate on my side also. Thank you very much. I'll continue later.